And then we'll be done for today. Should take about an hour or so, a little over. All right, because first thing I want to do is show you the uh, the actual. I got to move this thing. This thing is no good up here. Move this over here. Turn on the projector. All right, turn off the lights. A little bit. There we go. And we will talk about, as soon as that comes on, we'll talk about the forces. And what all that means. Because people get um, confused on what forces actually are doing. Okay? All right. So, forces. This is about force and motion. Now, chapters two and three, here they come. Come on in, come on in, come on in. All right, um, chapters two and three, uh, the, uh, the objects were already moving. They might be accelerating, okay, but we had no idea how they got started, all right? Now, we're going to look at how things get started. And things get started because there is a net force. Here, if you learn nothing else from chapter 4, here's what I want you to know. I want you to know that people are still coming in. Come on in. It's quite all right. Everybody came today. Good, good. Come on in. I, I, I knew I should have waited until 5 till. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. But that's okay. All right. Now, um, if there's nothing else you, you learn from chapter 4, is that a net external force, that means all the forces don't add up to zero. Like this book sitting here on this table is not moving. Come on in, Robin. <laughs> You're quite all right. All right, now, this book is not moving, even though all the forces, because all the forces add up to zero that are working on it, all right? The earth is pulling down on it, but something's in the way. The table is in the way that's holding it up, okay? And so, um, if I added up all the forces on the book, it would add up to zero. Now, if I push it like this, I'm applying a net force horizontally that is making that thing move. And so, here's what a force does. A force changes something's velocity, okay? It creates a change in velocity. That's all it does. Which, what's a change in velocity over time? An acceleration. So it accelerates something. All right? And the force is in the direction of the acceleration. Or I should say it the other way around. The acceleration is in the direction of the force. Okay? So there's a change in velocity. And since we're talking velocities and accelerations, force then is it a vector or a scalar? Vector. It, yeah, it's a it's a vescalar tor ver. It's a vector, okay? All right. Force will be a vector. All right. So there, there's there's the big idea behind um, Newton's laws here. Okay. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna talk about the concepts of a force and a net force. And I always I have a habit of saying when I talk about the net force. Um, I have a habit of talking about, I want, you, I want you to think external force, not internal forces that are working on the thing, okay? Because it will be pushing back because for every action there's what? Reaction. Equal and opposite reaction. Now that's talking about if I push on, if I push on this water bottle, if I push on this water bottle, it pushes back with the equal and same force. Then you might be going, well, then nothing moves. No, that's not true, because I'm pushing, I'm, I'm creating a net force on it that's making it accelerate and change its direction this way, all right? I'm much more massive, so I'm pushing it, and it's going that way, all right? Okay, and then we'll talk about inertia, Newton's first law, and a little bit about Newton's second law, quite a bit about Newton's second law, and we'll do some of the examples in the book, and... Um, kind of start getting involved in free body diagrams and all that, and then we'll stop and regroup and kind of, not kind of, we will 
talk about the upcoming exam. All right, on Tuesday. Now remember, the exam's not a big deal here. It's only 5% of your grade, each exam, okay? So, so always keep that in mind, too. It's not like a big 30 percenter that's going to, if you screw it up, your, your life is over as you know it. Okay. A force is something that's capable of changing an object's state of motion. That is, it changes its velocity. So, there's the definition of a force. That's a concept of the force. So, if all the if all the forces acting on something don't add up to zero, then that, that indeed will change the velocity and create an acceleration. All right? Okay. So here's force concepts. All right. Now, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So I want you to think about this over here real quick. Let's say I'm free falling. I'm in free fall here. We, okay, there we go. It's either me or Barack Obama, one or the other. But anyway, free fall. I've got a force now. I've got my mg. What's the force that's, what's the force pair that's acting on this force right here? What's acting against this? Okay, gravity, um, the acceleration of gravity is going down, which is the force that I'm doing. Okay. Well, it's not, let's, okay, there is air resistance working against me, okay, and eventually those air molecules are going to bunch up and bunch up and bunch up and bunch up and bunch up until their force is equal, and then my acceleration will stop and I'll be at a terminal velocity, okay? But the other force that's here that's working against me, or, or that the equal and opposite force, is this little bitty force that I'm exerting on this big, huge earth. Okay? In other words, the Earth is attracted to me, too. The only problem is, it's much more massive than I am. All right? So it doesn't move much, according to me. All right? Okay. So that's another, so that's, if you're thinking of the force pairs that are at work here. All right? Okay, now, a zero net force or balanced forces. Now, this one, is unbalanced force. As you can see, that force two, the sum of the forces of the vectors here, you got a net force, and this will cause an acceleration in the same direction as that force. That's what that slide is telling us. Okay, so far so good. It seems pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Okay? All right, we distinguish between two types of forces. That force, where I'm falling, that's force at a distance. That's gravity. Or, mag or, or when we, next semester, we'll talk about the magnetic forces and, of course, the electric force. All right? Which this, these magnetic forces and this electric force is really, really strong. That's why we're held together right now, plus other forces that are at work there, too. You got strong nuclear forces and the weak nuclear forces, too. Okay, and, but we're going to be dealing mainly with contact forces such as friction, tension from a rope or string, and so on. Okay, those are the actual forces like, again, I move the water, I apply a force, moving the water, that's a contact force. Okay, now, inertia. Right now, I want you to concentrate. You don't need to close your eyes or anything because you'll probably go to sleep. But can you feel yourself accelerating? You feel yourself accelerating? No. So this is an inertial reference frame as far as we're concerned because we can't feel any acceleration. Okay? It, it's almost like if you're on a bullet train in the dark with the shades pulled, you can't tell if you're moving. All right? Everyone wants to feel it like that little shake which changes your position, which creates an acceleration. So that's not an inertial reference frame. So we're in an inertial reference frame. Inertial reference frame means a frame, an area that we're looking at, a system that's not accelerating. All right? Now, Aristotle said that the natural state of something, now let's talk about what inertia is. Aristotle said that the state of something, he rolled some things. 
He rolled a marker. Well, that wasn't a very good roll. Let's kick it. He rolled a marker, and it stopped. And he's like, well, the natural state of things is that they want to stop. And so that's what, so eventually, they'll just run out of steam. No, Galileo, had, now remember, Aristotle was where we sat around and did thought puzzles. That's the way we did science. Galileo said, no, we got to do experiments. He's like the father of, well, of our positivism right now that we have. And rationalism, he's the father of rationalism. In other words, we got to do experiments and see what happens. And so, he, he, based on his experience, experiments with inclined planes and everything, he said, an object will stay in motion or will remain at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. Okay? The absence of any force is going to just keep going on forever. Our moon wants to keep going in a straight line, but due to the force of gravity, it falls around the Earth every 20, what, four days or something like that? 26.7 days? I can't remember. Something like that. Our astronomer downstairs is no. Okay? So an object in motion will stay in motion. Okay? And an object, I think they talk about inertia. Okay. Galileo called this inertia. Inertia is the tendency, the natural tendency of an object to remain in a state of rest. You've heard about organizations having to overcome inertia, stuff like that. Or this is always the way we've done things. Trying to get them to change is hard. Okay? Same thing with massive things. They're going to remain in uniform motion or at rest. A constant velocity. What about constant velocity? Does that have an acceleration? No. Because V final minus V initial equals zero when you have constant velocity. Okay, so later Newton realized that mass is a measure of inertia. And what do we measure? How do we measure our mass in physics? What unit? Kilograms. Kilograms. In chemistry, they use grams because you use little dinky, dinky little masses. So they keep it at grams. Physics are manly. They use kilograms. Thousands of times better than chemistry. Anyway, all right. So later, okay, so that's, that's the inertia thing. And we still don't know what mass is. We still don't know why things stick together. We got, I mean, we got the electromotive force. We got the strong and weak nuclear forces in there and everything. But really, it's kind of strange that things, that there's any thing besides subatomic particles anyway. Because right? when the Big Bang first happened, it was all hydrogen, just accelerating. Were the results of 13 billion years of hydrogen cooling off? Okay. All right. 13.7 billion, actually. Okay. In a few days. All right. Newton's first law is sometimes called the law of inertia. Okay? And in the absence of an unbalanced force, the, the net force equals zero. That's an external force. A body at rest remains at rest. Like that. I think I've beat that into your heads. All right. And here's Newton's second law of motion. Experiments show, by experiment, remember, you, nothing can be a scientific theory until you've experimented with it and it turns out to be true each time, shows that acceleration of an object is proportional to the force exerted on it divided by the mass. Okay? It's actually equal to, that's the acceleration. It's directly proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to its mass. Okay. So they put it all together. So the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass. And this is key. The direction of the acceleration is in the direction of the applied net force. Alright. Okay. So let's talk about what the forces are. Newton's second law of motion, the units of force are called Newtons. It's called a Newton. One Newton is one kilogram meters per second squared. So let's say I'm pushing on this with a force of, this thing has a mass of 
five kilograms, say, and I'm pushing on it with a force of 20 newtons, what would be the acceleration? How much was the mass? Five. So 20, force of 20 newtons, F equals MA. So 20 equals five times A, so the acceleration would be four meters per second squared. That's pretty quick. Four meters per second squared. But if all of a sudden I doubled the mass and I doubled the force, because it's all, it's, it's all a linear relationship, then, um, well, wait a minute. Oh, they left the mass the same. If I double the force and leave the mass the same, then I will double the acceleration. Now I'm going eight meters per second squared. That's almost pulling a G. When people say you're pulling Gs, that means you're accelerating 9.8 meters per second squared. So those guys are really, they're hauling. It's like a NASCAR then going around the corner. Okay. Or you have to wear a G-suit. I think when we get to uh, rotational motion, we'll, we'll, I, I'll explain, well, I might do it right now real quick. Have you ever seen a roller coaster that's a perfect circle loop-to-loop? -loop? Have you ever seen one that's a perfectly circular loop-to-loop? -loop? They're usually what? kind of teardrop shaped, right? Or they're more in a spiral. The reason is, if you went in a perfectly circular loop-to-loop, -loop, when they're coming back down through that, at the bottom of that thing, people would be pulling about two Gs, okay? And so you'd have, you know, no pregnant women? Yeah, right, you know, when it says on the ride, this ride is not recommended for you. Well, just anybody, their eyeballs would be popping out of their head and everything. Well, probably not that bad, but, but that's why. And plus, they can't get a roller coaster up high enough, engineer it so it, it, they're way out of OSHA standards if they, to get it up high enough to go through that whole loop to loop or thing. But if you go in a spiral, it, it kind of gives a nice, gives a, sends a nice thrill without hurting anyone. All right. Okay, and so if we use the same force but double the mass, then we'll just have half the acceleration. All right, let's look and see how we actually do these problems. So we're get, that's, that's all the laser light show you're going to get today with that. And we're going to actually do some of the problems and we'll take our little quiz and then, uh, which is really not a quiz, it's more of a class participation grade uh, type thing. Okay, but let's do some Let's do some problems first. I'm going to take them right out of the book. Not the homework problems, which I will assign to you on Friday. But, I, but, but I'll just give two or three because I know you're taking an exam on Tuesday too. So I just want to give you a couple. All right. I want to, what do I want to do? I want to turn this off and turn the lights on. Boom. All right, now, here's the first problem. Here's the first problem. And I'm going to take this right out of the book so we don't get all messed up. Okay, it says a tractor pulls a loaded wagon. Okay, so I got this little loaded wagon being pulled by a tractor. And that's a wonderful marker. Okay. So we should put that in the trash later. Okay, so I got this little tractor. There we go, that's a little better. A little trailer being pulled by a big old tractor, okay? Here's my big old tractor. Farmer Jones sitting up here in his tractor, his hat on, the steering wheel, something like that. Tractors kind of look like that, okay? All right, now. Um, and he's pulling it with a force, so let's do it. Let's do it the way a physicist would draw this picture. He go, oh, I'm just worried about this force of 440 newtons that you're pulling this way. Okay, that's the net force. All the other forces, like the forces in the y direction, the trailer pushing down on the uh, ground and the ground pushing up on it, those all add up to zero. 
So there's no acceleration in the air, and there's no acceleration, the, the thing's not uh, flying away or crashing through the center of the Earth, okay? And so the only force that I have is this guy, okay? And the mass of the load, the mass of the load in the trailer is equal to 75 kilograms, and the mass of the trailer is equal to 200 kilograms. They wanted to know, this is our free body diagram of, I've taken this wonderful artwork, turned it into this. They wanted to know, what's the acceleration? I'm going to put a little arrow over that because this system, I'm just looking at this part, okay? I'm not worried about the tractor or any of that kind of stuff, all right? Um, they want to know what the acceleration is. And there is an acceleration going that way. Same direction as the net force. This is the direction that the acceleration is going, okay? They want to know what the acceleration is. Well, that's not bad. This is actually kind of a nice, you know, typical of physics class. They kind of do, it's the Tina Turner method again. They start off nice and easy, but we're going to end rough here in a minute with the last part of it. So we got uh, the mass of the load plus the mass of the trailer times the acceleration. Wow. We got 440. Newtons equals uh, 275 kilograms times A. And so when I divide out, remember, my Newtons are in kilograms, meters per second squared. So when I divide out the kilograms from it, I'm left with meters per second squared, which is an acceleration. And 275 divided, 440 divided by 275 is 1.6 meters per second squared. That's what that came out to be. 1970. Nice and easy. Now, we're going to pump up the volume here just a little bit. Going to wind up with two equations, two unknowns, possibly. All right? Possibly. So, let's take a look at this type of problem. If you can figure out this type of problem, you're on your way. I've got, I want to double check, make sure. Yeah, mass two is big. I've got mass two here. And it's attached to a rope to a smaller mass one. And they're both being pulled with a force of 12 newtons. Mass 1 is equal to 2.5 kilograms, and mass 2 is equal to 3.5 kilograms. Okay, it's got a net force of 12 newtons. Is this system accelerating? How said yes, so we'll go with that, okay? So since it has a net force, since it has a net force, it is accelerating, and it's going that way. And the sum of the forces in the x direction, x direction equals 12. We've got to figure out what the acceleration is and the tension in the rope that's attaching these two. Okay? And here's the way we do tension. 12 newtons is pulling on this guy. Tension is pulling back. And they oppose each other like that. So I've got a tension here and a tension here. And guess what? They're equal to each other, okay? Because this is, uh, this is a rope that does not exist in this universe because it has no mass and it has no stretchiness, all right? You can't stretch it and it has no mass. Nothing there, so it, it doesn't really exist, but for us it does, all right? So it, it's got a tension. Tension is a force, okay? So we gotta figure out that tension that's on that string. Do you think that tension is 12 newtons? Is tension on that string 12 newtons? Maybe? No? Yeah. Yeah? Well, because you said it's like a special kind of probes. Right, right. Okay. Let's, we're going to figure out what the tension is. Think about it this way. What if 
what if I had a great big massive thing that's kind of on wheels and it's attached kind of to this little bitty thing over here that's on wheels and I and you're and you're able to pull this thing would there be much tension on this rope here no so you, so your common sense is telling you oh oh no the tension here is going to be much smaller than that force okay cuz you all kind of can picture that so this tension is going to be a little bit smaller than that 12 newtons because it's got to go through this mass right here. All right. So we actually have three systems here that we can look at. We can look at the big overall system. So if I look at the big overall system, does tension have a play in that at all? No, because now it becomes an internal force that's canceling each other out because these two tensions are equal to each other, and so this plus T plus a minus T equals zero. Okay, so it cancels out in the big system. So let's take a look at the acceleration of the big system, and I bet you we can find the acceleration. Then we'll break it down into its smaller pieces and figure out what the tension is. Okay, so here we go. If we look at the big system, we go, oh, well, the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to T a positive T minus a T plus a 12 Newtons equals the mass of 1 plus the mass of 2 divided by A. Well that's nice because then I get 12 Newtons is equal to 2.5 and 3.5 is 6 kilograms times A divided by six kilograms on both sides and I get um, this equals A which is 2.0 meters per second squared in the direction east now I've got to figure out the tension which won't be too bad okay now we'll figure out the tension and we can just, oh, quick question. Is block two and block one, is the mass of two and mass one, are they accelerating at the same rate? Yeah, yeah, they are. Otherwise, if they weren't, then we wouldn't have a massless and stretchyless rope there. We'd have like, have you seen those little slinky dogs? It'd be like a slinky dog, because you pull it, pull it, pull, and it stays, so it's not accelerated, then all of a sudden it catches up accelerates, catches up, accelerates. We don't have a slinky dog. That's a very hard problem. But Okay, so let's take a look at, now let's break the system down. Let's just take a look at this one. So I'm going to just take a look here. This will be system two. This was system one, and we could look at system three too a little bit later on just to make sure that we got the tension right. But let's like, take a look at system two. System two looks like this. All I have is tension, but it is accelerating, okay? All I have is that tension. And so the sum of my forces in the x direction is equal to the tension, which I don't know, which equals the mass of block two times the acceleration. Well, the acceleration hasn't magically changed since we last figured it. So, This tension sorry, I was thinking about something is equal to 3.5 kilograms times 2.0 meters per second squared. Well, I'll be darned, I've got a Newton. I've got kilograms, meters per second squared, so the tension equals 7 Newtons. That's for system two. See, I'm, I get a rehearse with my 230 class. I started off with this equation, and I went, uh-oh, and didn't do the whole picture first. Started off with this equation, went, uh-oh, I've got two unknowns, because I didn't know my A yet. I went, whoops, and so then I went back to this equation. Now let's look at system three. 
Here we go. Let's look at system three. And that one looks funny. That one looks different. That one has a tension going this way, which we don't know yet. And it's got the 12 newtons going that way. And then all the forces in the y direction are zero, so it doesn't have a net force, but we know it has a net force of 12 newtons going this way, so we've got an acceleration going that way. And we say, oh, the sum of the forces here then is equal to negative t plus 12 newtons, which equals 2.5 kilograms times A. And see, so this afternoon I got stuck. I mean, it wasn't stuck, but I had two equations, two unknowns, so I had to do this substitution. Took this guy, put him in here for minus tension, then added him to both sides, basically wound up with this. So if this is two newtons, if this is two uh, meters per second squared, I mean, then I've got minus T plus 12 newtons equals five newtons. Subtract 12 newtons from both sides, and I get minus T equals minus seven newtons, which is correct. And so T equals seven. So it checks. So it checks. Okay, that's just in one dimension. That's just going, we can also have forces, and they normally do, act in two dimensions. Okay? And that's where we'll get started with this example. Um, what we have to do is This is a much trickier problem, and I'm just going to set it up, and then we'll I'll leave you in suspense until next Thursday after I pass back your test. By the way, I'm pretty good about, I try and be. You take a test on Tuesday, I'll have it for you on Thursday, okay? And you'll probably be able to see sometime on Thursday what your actual grade was before you even come to class. All right, now. Here's the situation. I've got a box that's on the XY coordinate system like this, and it's got an initial velocity. It's got an initial velocity going like that. But then all of a sudden, it experiences a force. Well, I like to say it's a hockey, uh, it, it, well, no, a hockey puck, that wouldn't experience a constant force at all, okay? It's got to experience a constant force going this way at 60 degrees. Okay, so basically my free body diagram looks like this. Now, don't put velocities in your free body diagram, just forces. That's all we're going to put in there. Okay, and we'll put the velocity, we'll just keep in mind. Okay, if this thing has an initial velocity going in the x direction and all of a sudden experiences a net force that's going like this, it's going to now have a velocity in the y direction and a velocity in the x direction, so it's going to change. Okay, that's going to create a change on it. And actually, if I got a velocity and it experiences a force this way, it's going to speed up, right? Because it's experiencing an acceleration in the same direction as velocity, so it'll go faster. And up. So it's actually going to probably go like this, in a circle type thing. All right, but anyway, but the forces on it would look like this. You got a force in the x direction, and you have this force in the y direction. And fx, some of the forces in the x direction would equal um, f cosine of 60 which equals, it will make this thing accelerate. It's going to accelerate like this. Okay. Would be the mass of the box times the acceleration in the x direction. And the sum of the forces in the y direction would equal the force times the sine of 60, which equals the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. 
put my little vectors on there, and that's where we'll stop. Because then they said, okay, it's got an initial velocity. After five seconds, where is it located, and how fast is it going? Okay, so we'd have to look at its x component, its initial, its initial y. What's the initial y component of the vector of the velocity, right here? What's the initial y component? Zero. Zero. Because this is going in the x direction. Okay, so we'll stop there and we'll take our little quiz and then we'll review for the test real quick. Okay? Now remember, this is, I want you to talk and work it out together. This is really kind of a class participation type thing. By the way, some of you, Molly and Emily, here you go, because from last time, Colin never did make it in, or Taylor, but Rashonda did. She's right here. What's that? Yeah, and Blake's back here. But downtown Michaela Brown didn't make it yet, but James did. All right. There we go. All right, now, and Laura didn't make it. Okay, <laughs> now that everybody knows who's not here, all right, let's do this. Let's lower the screen, the magic screen. You all are probably way too young to remember the Winky Dink cartoons, aren't you? Came out like the late 50s, early 60s. Now, it, was, it was the first, it was, it was like the grandfather of interactive television, okay? And Winky Dink and his, and his mighty dog Manfred, they'd go on all these adventures, and then all of a sudden, they would be at a place where there's, they need, you need to draw the bridge for them. Well, see, you're supposed to send off for 695 or something like that, the magic Winky Dink screen that went over the television so you could crayon across. Well, I didn't do that, you know. So when I drew the bridge on the television, whew, no more winky dink for me. But anyway, all right. Now that things are much more sophisticated. But anyway, here we go. Here's quiz six. And we're going to show the slideshow. So we've got our magic screen here. All right, now here you go. A book is lying at rest on a table. The book will remain there because... There's a net force, but the book has too much inertia. Hmm. There are no forces acting on it at all. It does move, but too slowly to be seen. There is no net force on the book. Or E, there is a net force, but the book is too heavy to move. That sounds like variations on a the theme from A. Which do you think it is? Talk among yourselves. <coughs> I'm going to call on Seema. She's going to answer. No, I'm just kidding. She's like, oh, please. You know, she's got the right. I'd rather die than speak out loud in class. <laughs> Right. Right. Okay, so which one is it? A? Nah, it's not A. B, if you were, B is one of those that people would pick if they're in the stress environment of a test and they see, oh, no forces. Yeah, there's no forces. No, there's no net forces. Okay, there's forces here on that book, but yeah, but there's no net forces on the book. So the correct answer was D, 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 put D down, one D, and then it's real easy for me to grade. But the objective is to learn. Grades, don't, grades are silly things. I'm, 
isn't that what Ronald Reagan said about facts? But you guys are too young to remember those days too. He said facts are silly things. Okay, a hockey puck slides on ice at constant velocity. In the Marine Corps, they used to stomp three times when there was something important to me. It's at constant velocity. What does constant velocity mean? No acceleration. So what is the net force acting on the puck? Is it more than its weight? Equal to its weight? Less than its weight, but more than zero? Depends on the speed of the puck. Or zero. Go ahead. Talk about what do you think? Trying to ask a very deep question. That's a good question. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chime in now because Rashana said something very good. She goes, "Well, if the net force is zero, why is it moving?" Because what's Newton's first law say? It's, it, we got it moving somehow. See, once I whack the puck, all right. Once once I hit the slap shot on the puck, okay, and the stick is no longer hit, touching the puck. Once it moves away, there's no more forces acting on it. So it had an initial velocity, and it's going to want to keep going at that initial velocity forever, unless acted upon by another force. The same reason why when you're in free fall, you eventually reach a terminal velocity. You have a velocity, you just don't, aren't accelerating anymore. Okay? So it, it's a great question that she, she goes, well, if you don't have, because we all think you have to have a force to move. No. You can be zipping along out in outer space, close to the speed of light, and if there's nothing acting on, you're going to keep going at the speed of light. Of course, in your reference frame, you think you're stationary because you're not accelerating, and there's nothing else to gauge yourself by that you're moving. Blue. Okay, anyway. All right, so it's zero. After all that, it's zero. Okay. All right, this is my favorite. You put your book on the bus seat next to you. When the bus stops suddenly, the book slides forward off the seat. Why? A net force acted on it? No net force acted on it. It remained at rest. Now, this is my favorite choice, my, these two. It did not move, but only seemed to. That's existential physics. We don't do that. That's metaphysics. Or gravity briefly stopped acting on it. Just gravity just quit. Just all of a sudden decided, I'm, I'm not going to play gravity anymore. So we know it's probably not D and E. <laughs> but which one is it? it okay. It keeps going forward. <laughs> All right. This is why we have those restraining seats now, those All right, funny story. Since you don't know this lady, it won't get back to her daughter. But anyway, it's a friend of mine. She's a grandmother, very doting grandmother. Was watching her like eight month old granddaughter and she didn't know how to put that cockamamie car seat that her daughter dropped off, you know, in the back. She thought she had it right, but they got these things. They're like, they're, they're almost like, if you ever seen those um, shots of the, of the uh, rover that they put on Mars when they dropped it down and it bounces, you know, it's this big thing. That's the way those car seats are now. But anyway, she didn't get it in right, okay? And so what happened was she went around to turn, 
whoa, baby's upside down now in the back seat. It's still, it's strapped in the seat fine, but all of a sudden it's like, oh, oh. So, and so then she's almost had a wreck trying to pull over so she could get the kid back upright again. But anyway, babies, they, they put up with a lot. All right. Every time I got my daughter out of her cars, I'd but like bump her. She just started kind of going like this because I'd always bump her head on the, on the door frame. But anyway, okay. Now, what's going on here with the book? And if you're, if you're watching that bus go by, okay, and it's got the big windows, you know, and you can see that book sitting on the chair, remember? Ludicrous explained the big windows and crash. All right. Anyway. It goes by and it and it comes to a stop. She saw it. You remember that? Right, right. Oh well, yeah. Well, when there's a there's a when there's a pregnant pause, you just keep going. Okay. All right. But anyway, um, so uh, anyway, if I, if I saw the book going by, it's an object in motion, and what's it going to do? It's going to stay in motion unless acted upon by another force. Now, the reason you don't go flying forward is because your body reacts and your feet stop you, okay? And you push back, all right? The book doesn't have feet. It just has, it's just on that slick vinyl, which has very little friction, and so whoosh, it keeps going, all right? So with that explanation, which answer is it? A, B, or C? B, no net force acted on it, so it continued to go at, at 70 miles. All right. In other words, that's why it's so dangerous when people are standing up on a bus. So, Because when it stops, if the bus is going 40 miles an hour and comes to a stop, those people are going 40 miles an hour. Okay? And then all of a sudden they stop. Lunge. Okay? All right. Okay. So, and there's no net force acting on you like a seatbelt or something. Okay? All right. Let's go on to question four. See, see, the laws, you think they're easy. You think these things are easy, but they're, but they're kind of hard. Okay, you kick a smooth, flat stone on a frozen pond. All right, a friend of mine lives in Minneapolis. Okay? And uh, he can actually walk to work very quickly on when it turns winter because he can just walk across this lake. Now there's one or two lakes up in Minnesota and there's like 12 right there in the city of Minneapolis. All right, and um, so he's on his friends of body, kicks. The stone slides and slows down and eventually stops. Now don't be an Aristotle here, okay? Don't, don't think like Aristotle, think like Galileo and Newton, or I'm sure there was probably others, but you know, we, we do the Western European canon. All right. Um, so the force pushing the stone forward finally stopped pushing on it. Okay. No net force acted on the stone. A net force acted on it all along. The stone simply ran out of steam. I like, I like their D's and E's. The stone has a natural tendency to be at rest. This is Aristotle. Okay. That's what Aristotle said. So we've got, again, we've got a choice between A, B, and C. Now, this is A. Oh, I know. Y'all figured it out. Sorry. I like these things. Think it's C? All right. Yeah, right. So which one is it? C. C, yes. It is C. Okay? Because A, the force pushing the stone forward, this gets back to what Rashonda was asking earlier about the hockey puck. Once I've done kicking, once my foot is, once the stone's gotten past my foot, there's no more force, uh, the force pushing the stone finally stopped pushing on it. Well, that happened a long time ago. Okay? All right? So now it's starting to slow down, just like in chapter two. There's a, there's a deacceleration going on. 
So if there's an acceleration going this way, which way is the net force going? Same direction, all right? So there is a net force that's acting on it that will eventually stop it, okay? Yeah, yeah, you got F equals MA. You got one point, but it's, it's a loaded question. F equals MA is a very loaded question. All right, last one, cart on a track. I don't like this. It should be box on a track. Because when I think of cart, do you think of wheels too? You think some has to have wheels if it's a cart? Yeah, this isn't. All right, this is a box. Okay, this is a box. Consider a box on a horizontal frictionless table. Once the box has been given a push and released, what will happen to the box? Because the reason that I'm saying it doesn't have wheels is because if it's on a frictionless table, and it has wheels, what's going to happen? It's going to stay there. You need friction for wheels to work. Okay? All right, random thing again. My cousin Vinny got mud in your tires, right? This, Alabama's famous for its mud. All right? He couldn't go anywhere because he was stuck. No friction. All right? Sir Mix a lot. But anyway, so you've got. Uh, Consider a cart on a horizontal frictionless table. Once the cart has been given a push release, what will happen to the cart? Slowly come to a stop. Continue with constant acceleration. Continue with decreasing acceleration. Continue with constant velocity or immediately come to a stop. Which is it? D, constant velocity. Mr. Courtright, who says, I don't know any of this stuff. He's gotten them all right so far. Okay? Good. Good, good, good. Right. In other words, once I've done giving it a push, there's no more acceleration, but there's also no more net forces. So it'll just, an object in motion will stay in motion. All right? At a constant velocity. All right, good. Good, good, good. Let's talk about the exam. First of all, you get to bring an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. All right. And I have before me, and I have 180 copies of this in my office right now. Our, our, our work study guy is all over it. I was like, you're good. Anyway. Um, Basically, it's going to be five questions with several parts. Each part's worth five points, 100 points. But there's actually 105 points on the test. So when you get to the last question, number five, it's only worth 10 points, but there's three, there's 15 there. And if you get all three of them, you get a bonus of five. So if you actually made an 80, now you get an 85 type thing, OK? All right, so and remember, it's only 5% of your grade. The first question will be about kinematics. It's going to tell you what's going to be on it, so you can study, you can go work problems this weekend. All right? It's going to be kinematics, chapter two. Basically, you're going to have an acceleration. Let me turn off the projector. Turn on the lights. Turn this up. Wait, this is supposed to work. Does this work? <laughs> it didn't work this summer, did it? Did it work this summer? Oh. Come on, help brother out here, Hal. It didn't work. All right, now. Okay, this is your buddy. This equation is your buddy. He will always be your buddy because he is the derivation, or, or she, it's actually gender neutral. Um, but anyway, x equals the distance equals the initial distance plus the initial velocity times time plus one half a t squared times the acceleration. You can do work miracles with that equation, which is derived from taking, it's the second integral after um, acceleration, basically. That's a calculus thing. Don't worry about it. But that's where it came from. All right? And so is, if something can you find, in other words, if you know the time and you know the initial velocity and you know the acceleration, you can know the distance where that thing is at any, at any time, right? If you're given the time. All right, you're going to be given the time. 
And you're going to be given the initial velocity. It started at what? Rest. So therefore, it started at zero. Right. And you're going to be given the final velocity. You've got to figure out the acceleration. Can you do that? If you're given the time? Given two velocities? Final? And, yeah, that's be pretty... Oh, no, now I'm getting too carried away. All right. But you're going to be given that kind of stuff. That's going to be the kinematic equations. There's going to be several things to answer about a given situation. But it'll be that straightforward. I've already gotten you started, so you won't be... So you won't have sticker shock when you come in. I think that's the biggest problem people have with science and math tests is they have no idea what to expect, so they study everything, and they're frazzled. And they studied everything, so they know nothing. All right? I've seen that trend. All right. Now, and if all of a sudden I said, OK, the first part of it, it lasted for 11 seconds, well, you'd know the distance anywhere. OK? And you could probably figure out the, and it's already gave you the final velocity and stuff like that. What well, if it said went, it accelerated at, the continu at that same acceleration for another five seconds? Then you could keep going, and you'd find the final velocity then, and all that kind of stuff. All right? OK, good. You can do it. Now, you will have, I will give you two vectors and its components. And guess what you're going to do? You're going to add them? What else are you going to do to them, Rachel? Yeah, go with that one. <laughs> Subtract them. Yeah. But the first thing you're going to do is you're going to tell me what the magnitude and direction of each of the vectors are, given the x and y components. Jeffrey's going, they never did this at Rala. But anyway, OK? All right. But we're just, we just want to know the basics. And I just want to know that you've learned the basics. All right? So you're going to add them, subtract them. And remember in your lab where you took some vectors and, and you got them all to come out to be 0? In other words, if I give you two vectors, A plus B, can you figure out a vector C that will get you back home? Yeah, that kind of thing. OK? So, and you'll have to find the magnitude and direction. Remember, good old Pythagorean theorem, inverse tangent. This <laughs> t-shirt's cracking me up. But anyway, remember. Remember when Homer tried to eat so much that he got to get a disability? Remember that adventure? Yeah. Yeah. That's what started my crash. I lost about 30 pounds from when we started doing this because I saw myself on YouTube. I went, oh my God. How's he not erasing the blackboard every time he turns around? But anyway, and he, and he went, and anyway, Homer stood up on, on the, the scale and his gut was hanging on the towel rack. So he went, it was funny. Anyway, sorry. Okay. All right. Now, you're also going to throw a stone vertically, or not vertically, horizontally off a bridge. It's 20 meters high. Whoops, too much information. All right. It's like old people in their medical conditions. Too much information. All right, now. So you're going to throw this thing horizontally. I want to know how long it's in the air. I want to know how far it goes. And I want to know the final velocity when it hits the ground. So practice some of those problems. See if you can find some of those in a book or on a physics website. Now, since we threw one horizontally, what do you think the next problem is going to be? Yeah, uh, no, not, not completely free fall, but yeah, it's going to be two dimensions, just a complete projectile motion. We're going to fire a projectile, which um, I, I, don't, I meant to change that. I meant to have the guy kick a football or a soccer ball or something, because I don't like, you know, I was in the military for 24 years. All of our physics and science and math seems to be so geared towards killing each other. But anyway. It's another one that is. Um, so if you're given the initial velocity in the x direction and the y direction, can you find the initial velocity? If you're given the x and y coordinates, can you find the actual velocity it was kicked and the angle? Do that. Can you tell me how far it went? Can you tell me how high it went? Can you tell me how long it was in the air? OK. Now, your buddy for all of these, where do you do most of your work? With the x component or the y component? y component. And here's your buddy again. y equals y naught 
plus V naught Y times T minus one half G T squared. To find the total time is in the air, what do I do with my Y and my Y naught? What are they equal to? To find the total, if I want to find the total time is in the air. Remember, these are how high it is. So if I so if I go zero and zero, so if these two suckers equal to zero, you're on your way, all right. Especially if you know this guy, and you already know this guy, you can find t all day long. Now, um, so after you do that, what's what's the time it took to get to its maximum height to get up to here? Say this was uh, seven seconds. T for the total. What would this What would this time be? Yeah, Mother Nature loves symmetry. As long as, but she loves to throw wind resistance and stuff like that at us and tumble and all kinds of things. Okay. All right. So there you go. Now the last questions will be not as hard as the ones you just did. Okay? But they'll be like that. They'll be conceptual motion type things. Okay? On, on the laws. Okay? Like know what a net force is. Um, kind of know the definition of a net force. Um, know the definition of inertia and yeah okay oh you do need I don't think I made this one clear an inertial reference frame is one where Newton's first law is valid there you go made it worth the trip to come in not only do you get a perfect score in your quiz, there's one question answered for you right there. All right, that's what you to expect on the test. Okay, that's it. Because I can only torture you for about an hour. All right, so now you, you I don't want any test anxiety or anything like that. Oh, I need your, t I need your quizzes, I need your quizzes.